It's over, Disney. Even if you don't know it, Disney and Hollywood impacts your life. You know, at one time, Disney used to be fun. Movies used to be magical. Video games used to offer great escapism and fans cheered. Today, Disney makes movies for boys in tutus, for fathers to look like fools, for families to come across like village idiots, and for women to be stripped of their femininity all so they can sing the joys of being single and alone while chanting the mantra that men suck. I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. Even video games today plug social justice headlines into every digital pixel. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Hate is the exact opposite of fun, but it's all part of their plans. Hollywood does impact your life. You can ignore it or you can take a stand. The choice is yours, but the fight is real. Old Hollywood may have been high as a kite and coked out of their minds, but they made great films. Their legendary stars didn't cancel their own culture. They celebrated their country. This is my country, and I'm going to do good for it. Oh, yeah, and there's one other thing I'll say tomorrow because I say it every day of my life. God bless America. At one time, Disney supported schools. They fueled kids' fantasies and even promoted the family. Their job was pretty simple. Put a smile on your face in return for your cash. And then the dark times came. Hey, Gonzo, you okay? Not exactly. I really wish I could wear one of those princess dresses to the ball. A few moments later. <gasps> Have you ever seen such a splendorific dress? Disney surrendered to the radicals when CEO Bob Iger embraced the new Hollywood message and gave birth to the tragic kingdom. We've tended to uh, shy away from politics. You know, I, I'm very proud of a lot of the work we've done in terms of diversity and inclusion on screen. While we did Black Panther, how great are we? Now the mouse house has fallen. The last four films are box office flops. Audiences avoid their productions like The Plague, and the studio is no longer number one in the Hollywood hive. But they are the king in every boardroom of Bud Light drinkers. If we're going to fight the woke mind virus, then the woke mind virus will fight back. And unfortunately, Disney is deeply infected with the woke mind virus. The battle lines are drawn, but not with swords and shields, but with the stories we tell and the heroes we celebrate. And one man tried to smoke out the woke from the company that Walt Disney built. Why do I have to have a Marvel movie? That's all women, Peltz asked rhetorically. Not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels that are both? Billionaire investor Nelson Peltz worked with former Marvel chairman Ike Perlmutter to oust two board members, then pick up those two seats, all to begin writing the Disney ship. Unfortunately, he lost this round for the second time in two years. I hope Bob can keep his promises. I hope they can do all the things they assured us they were going to do. And we'll only watch and wait. If they do it, they won't hear from me again. The Walt Disney Studios showed its true colors in this proxy fight for control of the company, but they didn't come across looking like a mouse. They came out looking like a rat. They stacked the deck against Pelt. Yet, the biggest blow to the fandom and the culture didn't come from the board of corporate cheese chasers or CEO Bob Iger. It came from Disney's biggest shareholder, George Lucas. No! Look out, Indians! It's Steven Spielberg and George Lucas! Well, well, hello there, Indiana! A few moments later. Oh, yeah. No. Andy. Yeah, get his pants down. Get his pants down. He's a nice guy up to now, and we like him a lot. Mm -hmm. And we are going to watch him turn to the devil. We're going to watch him make a pact with the devil. And it occurred to me one day that the perfect person to take over the company was Kathy. You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. It's hard for many to accept how George Lucas could betray the Phantom, how he could betray his own creation, Star Wars, which he once told Charlie Rose were like his own children. But he did. He tilted the scales in favor of the tragic kingdom to support Bob Iger. But it's odd, especially when he shared his feelings about the company, and they're very well documented. These are my kids. So All those Star Wars films. All the Star Wars films. They were your kids. Yeah, well, they are my, you know, I, I loved them, I created them. And Sell you them sold them. them. 
I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and and uh, <laughs> okay, but, but I mean, but people keep asking how George could have had a sudden change of heart. Well, six days before his announcement, you had Jamie Dimon, the chairman of the board for J.P. Morgan Chase, one of the most powerful people on the planet, threw his hat in the ring to support CEO Bob Iger. He didn't want less woke. He wanted more, thinking it's going to bring him more dollars. So what happened with George? Well, serving on the same board with Diamond just happens to be a woman named Melody Hobson. Hobson, who just happens to be the much younger wife of George Lucas. No way. So did George turn from the light to the Sith? Did he do it because he got pressure in the bedroom from his spouse? Makes you wonder what's on those tapes. It really doesn't matter. Nelson Peltz may have lost the fight, but he woke a lot of people up and he picked up a few allies along the way. Go yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Now that Disney CEO Bob Iger has won his little proxy battle, will he learn any lessons from it? Or will he simply keep repeating the same mistakes and in the future just redefine his failures as victories? Well, he was asked the question, is it possible for Disney to stay out of political and social agendas and just provide entertainment? And he answered, we know our job is not to advance any kind of agenda so long as I'm in the job. I'm going to continue to be guided by a sense of decency and respect, and we will always trust our instincts. Well, the Mouse House must feel invincible right now after their little victory, because not 24 hours after he made that statement, he just doubled down for more woke. After Bob Iger claims Disney does not advance any kind of agenda, Ozarks, Julia Gardner cast to play gender swap Silver Surfer in Marvel's Fantastic Four film. Marvel is going to trash another amazing actress's career. I'm serious right now. Julia is a brilliant actress. And the second Kevin Feige signed her to a contract, her future is over. Disney's not only going to stiff the fans one more time, going to lose their shareholders even more money. They're going to have another box office flop. But their failure, they're going to get humiliated for it in the press and in every online space. And for no other reason than to bow to the wishes of the Muon Command cult. See. Until studios start paying a steeper price in the pocketbook, you're going to have corporations like Disney continue to beat the diversity drum. I think that when it comes to the world of fantasy and sci-fi in general, it, it hasn't felt like a safe space always for people of color. What? So to be in any way, shape or form uh, a, a part of the wave that is ushering in inclusion and, and safety for black nerds, what the fuck are you talking about? Hate is a big business in Hollywood right now. It's 2024, four months into the year, and already there are 37 DEI companies in Tinseltown. 37 diversity, equity, and inclusion corporations telling directors what to do, shoving intimacy coordinators into productions, pushing people around, silencing those who won't obey, and showing their strength. Why? Because racism is the new business plan. They want to fight imaginary racism with real racism and then inject their sexual identity into every project because story no longer counts. It's only who's telling the story that matters. I wasn't sure what type I got so caught up in like what kind of terminology I was supposed to be using. Oh, here we go with that again. And just start saying like, I would like a black writer. You can't do that, that's racist. Because if I said diverse, no, don't you know, you, you, get, you get, well, white is diverse, which is something somebody said to me. And I was like, wow. I think you need therapy. Meet Harvey Weinstein's former assistant and coffee girl, Leslie Headland, the new director of Disney Plus's Star Wars series, The Acolyte. Star Wars saved my life. Like, yes, but actually no. Boy, she is so grateful to George Lucas and Star Wars that she's going to give it her whole heart and honor the universe. This is like what we understand to be Star Wars. Like the idea that like that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. Just in case you are curious, if you ever wanted to work for Lucasfilm or on a Star Wars project, now is the time, especially under Headland. And guess what? You don't have to know anything about Star Wars at all. And that's why Tinseltown is paying the price for it today. And they're going to have to learn their lessons the hard way, the same way the comic book industry did. And if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Later. I'm straight worried. Why? Um, because uh, stores are closing at a phenomenal rate. Uh, independent comic sales are down. What a fucking surprise. Just another blowhard with a bad attitude and a big ego who told everyone not to buy their products. So everybody listen. 
but gaming industry is now following in comics footsteps. They're ripping characters and causes from the social justice headlines and plugging them into your game and fun time. And to do that, to accomplish all their goals, they're now giving pointers to their peers about how to push their bosses around and silence them. Put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Oh, gee, thanks, Dave. Bang up job so far. Extortion, coercion. You'll pardon me if I ask you to kiss my pucker. Hollywood wants to transform Western society to look exactly like a modern day college campus. Forget the days when Hollywood was somewhere else. Anything that happens in Hollywood today doesn't just stay in Hollywood, it creeps into your home. We're talking revolution. <laughs> a ray crew built to address below line hiring practices. A platform created by women. <laughs> Promoting diversity and inclusion. <laughs> Connecting underrepresented talent to industry. Studios are working overtime to turn films into weapons that program malleable minds. Take Disney, for example. They embrace DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and identity politics. So they make a movie. The mainstream media then promotes that movie. And anyone who gets in their way, that means anyone who doesn't cheer or celebrate the films, all of a sudden gets branded as a bigot and a hater. Then schools start teaching those same identity politics lessons that they see on the big screen. Kids get confused, they go home and get into fights with their parents. Divided families become the new norm, communities get shattered, and your job and your workspace all of a sudden become like a prison. Because either you become a go-along, get-along John, or you remain silent in submission. Until we reach the day where a comedian was rejected simply for the color of his skin. Nelson Peltz may have lost, but his fight opened up a lot of eyes. And that's the good news, because many people say ignorance is bliss, but I believe awareness is power. And that is the first step to winning. Now, if you enjoyed this video and found value in it, hit the subscribe button. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think is going to happen next in Hollywood? And share with everyone you know. And to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Always forward.